there are several places on our planet that have disputed or undisclosed borders that potentially could make a country bigger or smaller depending on who you're asking. And the answer is almost always more complicated than you might think, and Morocco is no exception. As we went deeper into the geography of Morocco, we discovered a fascinating divide among countries when it comes to the size of Morocco. Some nations consider Morocco almost double its size, while others believe it's much smaller. And the reason for this lies in the inclusion or exclusion of Western Sahara, a territory that has been the source of much controversy and conflict for decades. So, is Morocco bigger than France, as some believe? Or is it closer to the size of California? And how does Western Sahara impact the country's landmass? Join us as we find out more about Morocco's size and geography, but also a deeper dive into what makes Morocco the fascinating country it is. Geometric face tattoos believed to have powers, architecture that blends in with the marsh-like landscape, four imperial cities and rebels in the deep desert. While this reads like a summary for a sci-fi movie, it's actually just some of the things that makes this North African country called Morocco a very interesting place. Splashed by both the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean, the Kingdom of Morocco is defined by monumental geographical features, such as the Sahara Desert to the south and east, which is separated from the rest of the country by the Atlas mountain range, which also splits Morocco. However, this is not the straight line visible on most maps that clearly puts an asterisk on the African country. You see, most maps shows a confusing non-straight line that divides this country into two or even three parts. One map might show a long country like this, that would span from the northern to the southern border of the United States and stretch coast to coast of Australia. Another might show a country about half that length, while a third map might show almost a full length but with a smaller bottom half. But in the most used geography tool of the world, Google Maps, there is a fourth option, a perforated line that splits this expanse, presenting what is known as the Western Sahara. So how should we present the size and population of this country, like we do for all our Countries Explained videos? Well, Morocco sure wants us to treat this place as one unit, or at least 80% of it. And later, I will explain why. Morocco, as you see it on Google Maps, is around 440,000 square kilometers, while Western Sahara is about 260,000 square kilometers. If we were to combine the two, like Morocco wants us to, this area would be the 39th largest country in the world, and hence larger than all purely European countries. The population rank of Morocco, however, doesn't change rank regardless if we include the disputed territory of Western Sahara or not. And peculiarly, also lands at number 39, behind Poland and ahead of Saudi Arabia, with around 37.5 million people. And when talking about the borders of Morocco, they're just as complicated to state for the aforementioned reasons. The line between Algeria and Morocco stretches for about 1,559 kilometers, plus the 41 kilometers that goes into the Western Sahara area. Then either Morocco or Western Sahara has a border of 1,564 kilometers with Mauritania. Then we have another curveball for you, namely the borders Morocco shares with Spain. Yes, Spain. And yes, we're still talking about land borders here, as the Spanish have enclaves on the African continent, spanning 18.5 kilometers total. And let's just say, what these borders lack in length, they make up in notoriety, as these are some of the most fortified fences in the world, and more on that whole never-ending mess later. But if you think Morocco's political life wasn't complicated enough, the kingdom also has territorial disputes with Spain as well, over some extremely tiny islands about a swim away from its coastline, but not the considerable Canary Islands, even though they are just offshore. If we are swimming back to the mainland, the Middle Atlas, High Atlas and Anti-Atlas ranges halt the desert and on the other side of it is where Morocco's arable flatland stands, tucked in the north by the rift mountainous region. This fertile land is naturally riddled with rivers, with the longest one, the Dra River, stretching 1,100 km to the south and serve as a border to Algeria in the east. Morocco has five cities with a populace higher than 1 million. The most crowded and most well known due to the Hollywood classic is Casablanca, with nearly 4 million people, although Marrakesh is also quite a bit popular as a tourist spot and somewhat in pop culture as well. Then we have the cities known as the four imperial cities of Morocco, Fez, Marrakesh, Meknes and Rabat. These are the historical capital cities and the latter holds the honor even today. Out of these four, only Meknes is well shy of the 1 million mark. And these cities are so luring for tourists that Morocco is in fact the African country with the most international tourist arrivals, even surpassing Egypt. So what else does Morocco offer that it can beat the Sphinx and the pyramids? Let's just say that there is a reason why Hollywood keeps filming in Morocco. Movies like Lawrence of Arabia, The Mummy, Gladiator, Black Hawk Down, Kingdom of Heaven, Prince of Persia, American Sniper and many many more were shot at least partially in the country. And basically, if there's sand in a movie, it was filmed in Morocco. 
The arid orange landscapes do provide an instant fantasy feel, and the many preserved medieval structures like the fortresses are large time travel pods, like the Xar of Eid Benadou, a fortified village that stands on the former caravan road to Marrakesh and erases the line between the landscape and human habitats. And speaking of architecture, in the city of Fez you can find the oldest university in the world, the University of Karin, also known as the University of al karawin which was founded in 859 AD. And in the same city, the Blue Gate of Fez is to be found, which is a great example of how the architecture in these areas honor entryways with stunning mosaics. Although the most famous site in Morocco might be the Smurfs' dream destination, the Blue City of Chefchaouen. But walls and buildings are not the only places you see stunning artistic patterns in Morocco, as the local Berber women tend to have geometrical tattoos covering their faces, each particular mark with a believed power to it, like inducing fertility, curing illnesses and protecting against the spirits. And the Berbers were one of the first groups of people settling down in present-day Morocco, but this place has taught us a lot about the history of humanity, as it is here where fossil bones of a 300,000 year old Homo sapien were found. That means that the oldest human fossil of the species we are today has the origin here. But back to the Berbers. Although that is not how these people call themselves. You see, Berber stems from the same Greek word as the term barbarian came from. But the Berbers themselves used the word imasegen or amaseg, meaning the free people. The Berbers endured conquests from Phoenicians and Carthaginians in the BC era. And in the 3rd century BC, a Berber kingdom of Mauritania emerged, not to be confused with the modern state of Mauritania. Its fate was largely dictated by the Roman Empire, which conquered the coastal areas in the 1st century of the current era, with the remnants still standing, controlling the Berbers through trades, threats and alliances. A significantly more consequential conquest of today's territory of Morocco was done by the Arabs in the 8th century, adding Islam to the religions of the area, alongside Christianity, Judaism and animism. Now, 99% of Morocco's population is Sunni Muslim. The Arabs also made their language stick, which is one of the two official languages to this day, the other one being the Amasir language, although a third of the population also speaks French. And the Moroccans are proud to say that their dialect of Arabic, called Darya, is quite different from the rest. The two Berber Muslim dynasties, Al Muravid and Al Muhads, following one another, spread the territory into Spain across the 11th, 12th, and 13th century. And the history of Morocco can't be summarized without the mention of Ibn Battuta, a world explorer of the highest caliber. The Reconquista expelled most Muslims from the Iberian Peninsula by the 15th century, influencing Morocco with the Spanish way of life, but also taking those mentioned city enclaves in the north, while Morocco remained the only North African land not taken by the Turks. In the 7th century, the Alavi dynasty came to rule and its reign is now still supreme in Morocco although it wasn't so through the centuries. With the French taking Algeria in the 19th century, their eyes turned to its neighbors, and while Spain sought to expand their rule, the French took the middle of today's Morocco, while Spain got the bottom and upper portions, including the entirety of Western Sahara, which was even called Spanish Sahara. In the post-World War II era of decolonization, both European powers decided to forego the rule over Morocco, with the independence gained in 1956, and the following decade was marked by the failed four-month war with Algeria due to claims over Tindouf and Bekhar provinces. Meanwhile, Spain didn't consider letting go Western Sahara, but in 1975 the land was both claimed by Mauritania and Morocco, where Morocco made a risky gambit of wild proportions marching 350,000 unarmed people to the very border in a sign of protests. And as Spain withdrew, both countries captured parts of the land, although in the 80s Mauritania gave up. And so here comes some of the explanation of the borders in this area. You see, since Spanish times, another player has been involved, the Polisario Front, a rebel movement of the Sahrawi people, indigenous to Western Sahara. Backed by Algeria, they still de facto controls parts of Western Sahara, known as the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, or SADR. And as of now, 45 countries of the world recognize its sovereignty. And at the same time, Morocco's claim over Western Sahara isn't at all recognized by all countries either. And the UN are in fact calling the area a non-self-governing territory. So I guess we're way past the agree to disagree stage in this matter. So I mentioned at the start that the population wouldn't change much even if Morocco was counted together with Western Sahara, as this area is the fifth most sparsely populated area in the world with only two people every square kilometers. However, on the ground, Morocco controls 80% of Western Sahara, more specifically the part that holds the majority of the population and the resources. 
So Morocco wants to claim this land, right? And they've gone to some serious measurements to keep these percentages from the SADR. They took it so far that in 1980 they started to build a massive wall of sand and dirt. And with its almost 3000 kilometers, this wall is long enough to stretch from Denmark to Genoa. It's meant to keep the people who want Western Sahara to be a free and independent country on the other side of that wall and allows Morocco to control the remaining 80%. But this isn't the only heavily fortified walls inside of Morocco as the borders around Spain's small enclaves have some major security around them, as hundreds of people try to break into Europe on these frontiers. Nowadays though, the desert country is mostly in the headlines for far better things, mostly it athletes. The national football team exceeded all expectation at the 2022 World Cup by reaching the semi-finals in Qatar, another country we explained here. And Morocco's influence now exceeds the region through its materials, as it holds the largest phosphate rock reserve, 15 times larger than the next in line, China. And of course, a lot of the mines are in Western Sahara. And in case you didn't know, phosphate is necessary for the production of fertilizer. And without it, modern global farming for billions of dollars is pretty much impossible. There's a ton of other things to discuss when it comes to Morocco, as they're investing heavily into renewable energy and are the kingpins of sardines. But that's for another video. Now take time to visit another place on Earth by clicking a video on your screen right now.